In one way or another, we all have a family tree. You know, those diagrams of our discerned ancestry that show us where we've come from, who our people are, where our land was or maybe is or wasn't, and why we bear the names we have. You might even look at it as a geographical map of our physical being, displaying who we are as unique individuals, who have, of course, come into being through all those other unique individuals who came before us. Now, it's interesting stuff for those who get into it, who work with it, who seek to untangle the twists and turns of our physical stories. I continue to be intrigued by the restored daguerreotype hanging on my living room wall, one of Jenny Hutchison Wortham, 1852 to 1884, and her father, Charles T. Wortham, 1813 to 1881. It was taken in Caroline County, Virginia in 1855. She was, it seems, one of my great-grandmothers, and he was then one of my great-great-grandfathers. Besides being critical elements in my composite unique being, they are also responsible for my middle name. So no, I'm never very far away from either of them. No, indeed, not from the Wortham family of Caroline County, Virginia. But that being said, who were they really? Who were they really? Those family trees and, and those names and all of those pictures are in reality pretty darned one-dimensional. They're like cutouts, like paper dolls, showing us only physical images with little to no real substance. Nope, what's missing are the individual spirits within those folks that took them beyond their names and their images and twisted and turned them into who they actually were. And this, of course, then directs me into the heart of this week's gospel reading from John. I am the vine, you are the branches. You see, there's a whole lot more to us than our genes, than those scientific equations that display us on paper. At some point in our physical lives, we were, through the mysterious sacrament of holy baptism, adopted, actually enfolded into a spiritual family whose physical image, should we be silly enough to try and create one, looks more like 50,000 faces in a football stadium on Saturday afternoon. No, we are, you and I, anything but one-dimensional. We have a very real spiritual component within us that when we allow it, when we nurture it, moves us out beyond our individual physical images and then twists and turns us into one another and the world that we live through our lives in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This, my brothers and sisters, literally my brothers and sisters in Christ, is that glorious sacramental aspect of our human lives in Christ Jesus, of our eternal lives that are already being lived. We are, you and I, spiritual branches that continue to move us out as part of the divine vine that entwines us. We entwine ourselves within the timeless story that leads to God's gift of eternal life. The collect of the day appointed for this gospel lesson is as follows. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, 
that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Living within Christ's way, truth, and life right now are what takes us out of any one-dimensional image and puts us into the timeless warp and weave, the twists and turns of God's ever-unfolding creation. I encourage all of us to nurture this spiritual essence of who we truly are. And then, yes, then to rejoice in being part of the wonderful, eternal, living vine.